thing about hitting rock bottom is that it gives you a springboard to launch from. So at that point, I decided that I'm gonna take control over my life. I'm gonna take control over my circumstances. Up until that point, I had never done that. I was blaming everybody for my problems. I was blaming everything for all the problems that were happening in my life. I weighed 250 pounds. I had over 34% body fat. I was miserable. I didn't look like what I looked like today. But not just physically, I was mentally obese. I was mentally unfit, and I did not have a winning mentality. So what shifted for me was reading books. What shifted for me was getting around an environment that was conducive to my growth. Surrounding myself with people that are gonna uplift me and take me to where I wanna be. Healthy people, successful people. So I decided at that point that I'm responsible for everything in my life. I told myself, I am responsible. And the great thing about saying those three words that you can't say I am responsible and still be angry and depressed at the same time. It's, it's impossible. So the first thing I wanna do today is say it with all of you together the words I am responsible. So on the count of three, let's all say it together. One, two, three. I am responsible. That's right. Doesn't that feel good? Yeah. That feels great. So the moment you accept that is the moment that your transformation begins. And that's what happened with me. I said that, I got emotionally attached to that, and nine months later, I lost 80 pounds. Nine months later, I had 6% body fat. Nine months later, I had a mental six pack, which I think is more important than a physical physical six pack, right? Because there's a lot of fit, sick people out there who have six packs, but they're bad people, right? They don't have a mental six pack. But what if you can have it all, right? Don't you want to have it all? I want to have it all. So I transformed my body, I transformed my mind, and I started my own company. And I started training people, and I, tra I started sharing my message with people. I started helping people who were in similar situations that I was in. People who were overweight, people who were miserable, and I started to become so passionate about that, I became an entrepreneur, and now I own a CrossFit gym that has over 200 members, I do health coaching. It's my life, it's my passion, and I just wanted to give you guys a little background to who I am, and why should you even spend this hour with me. So well, I'm gonna talk for about 30 minutes, we're gonna do about a 15 minute Q&A, and then I'm gonna sign some books for you guys, and uh, I would love to just hear a little bit about you on an individual conversation. I'd love to meet a lot of you that I'm not familiar with. So the first thing I wanna start with is this book right here. It is 33 Years in the Making. Well, 33 Years in the Making. Uh, I'm really proud of it. It just got released last month on December 14th. Thank you very Woo! much. And it became number one in its category within 24 hours of its release. It became a bestseller on Amazon, and it's helping many, many lives out there. And everybody who's here gets a free copy. Uh, some of you already have it. Those of you who do not, I'm gonna give you a copy later. Do not worry, there's plenty of copies. And I'll thank you, John. Sorry. I also have a sheet here where we're gonna pass around, and I'm gonna get your full name, your email address, and your phone number, and I'm gonna send you guys what I have, what's called my fat burning plan, which is a $250 plan that I sell. It's a meal plan, it's a nutritional protocol, it's a dietary cheat sheet, a grocery cheat sheet. So give me your information, I'll provide that for you this weekend, just pass that around, okay? So the book is something that I wrote to help simplify the process of achieving perfect health. And I know the word perfect is a little bit, people have a little bit of uh, trouble accepting that word, you know, nothing is perfect, Ben, people always tell me that. My definition of perfect, of perfect health, I should say, is getting your body to function the way that it was designed to function. Normal, perfect health is getting your body to function normal. So we were designed a certain way. God, the universe, mother nature, whatever it is you believe in, we were designed a certain way to function, to thrive, to function normal. Right, but with our the way we eat, our lifestyle choices, our environment, our stress, we become out of balance, and disease starts to happen. Right, people start to get sick. So I wrote this book 
to give you the steps, the simple steps to achieve perfect health. And it's not complicated, it's not too sciencey. Um, you can read it in less than one hour and it's gonna transform your, your life. I, I guarantee it. If you follow the steps in this book, you're gonna transform your life. Today I'm gonna share with you the principles from this book and I already started my next book and I've been doing a lot of research in that book and I'm gonna share some new stuff that I've come across that's been working for me and my clients so you guys get the sneak peek before that book's released uh, later this year. And um, I'm not saying all this, by the way, to impress you guys, but I am saying all this to impress upon you that I've done the research, that I have the experience, and I'm not just some YouTube sensation that's just spilling a bunch of nonsense because there's so much confusion out there, there's so much noise in the health space. People are telling you you should go vegan, people are telling you you should go ketogenic, People are saying, go paleo, you'll get some size on you, you get to eat bacon. <laughs> so there's a lot of noise out there and a lot of confusion. And people come to me all the time. My clients ask me all the time, what's the best diet for me? I read this, I saw what the health documentary and they said I should be vegan. I read this article and they said I should be ketogenic. There's a lot of confusion. So what I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna explain what I, how I went about it and how I go about researching the best diet. But the truth of the matter is there is not one diet that's designed for all of us. We are all biochemical individuals. This means you, sh you might need 10 times more vitamin A than me, right? You might need five times more vitamin D than me. We're all different. We need to experiment. And I have a, a chapter one of my book talks about the winning formula. And I'm gonna break down a little bit about my experiment. I was a vegan for a year and a half in 2015. It worked very well for the first five months. After that, all of my therapeutic benefits diminished, but I was, I was kind of dogmatic about it. I put myself in a box and I stuck with it too long for a year and a half. And then I eventually started doing some blood work and the blood work confirmed the way I was feeling, which was not good. I had some things that were out of whack and I decided to do some more research and to change my diet, change my approach. Then I became, then I went into the ketogenic diet and I got some great results with that. Did that for five months, tested my blood ketones, Phenomenal results, then I kind of hit a plateau with that. And then I'm like, okay, so I got all the good things from the vegan diet, I got all the good things from the ketogenic diet, and then I formed my own diet, a version of both, right? You want whole foods, you want a lot of the stuff they sell here, organic, not highly processed food, you want whole foods, you want wild caught fish, these are the stuff that your body is designed to eat. So what I'm gonna talk about today gonna help you find that perfect diet for you. It's gonna help you achieve perfect health. And uh, there might be some questions that pop up because I'm gonna be saying a lot of things that might be contra controversy or things that are the complete opposite of what you've been taught. Uh, I, I'm going to answer all your questions, so just jot it down if you want on your phone. And then during the Q&A, you can feel free to ask me all the questions you like, and I'll answer all your questions for you. If you ask me 100 questions, I'll, ask you, I'll answer 100 questions. So I'm gonna start with some basic daily hacks that you can do that's gonna transform your health, it's gonna transform your energy levels, and it's gonna help you get closer to achieving perfect health, which is getting your body to function normal. Number one, when you wake up in the morning, the best thing you can do is go for a 15 minute walk. Get the sun on your skin, get the sun through your eyes. And it sounds very simple, you've probably heard that before, but I want to explain why this is the case. Because we are born we were designed to wake up after the sun gets up. The sun gets up, we get up. Our hormones follow a certain pattern, Pattern, right? We are diurnal creatures, meaning we are up during the day and we go to sleep during the night. That's the pattern we were designed to follow. So when you follow these principles, when you wake up after the sun is up and you go for a walk and you get sun in your skin, your body's gonna produce vitamin D. Your body's gonna produce cortisol, it's like in a natural, Way. Cortisol is, your, your, is a hormone that we all want in natural uh, ranges, so it gives you energy. Back in the day, cortisol was used to, uh, when you saw a tiger that you needed to run from, your body would produce cortisol, and you would decide if you wanted to fight that tiger or if you wanted to run away from that tiger, but that cortisol gave you the energy to do so. The problem in modern society is that we get a cortisol surge when we're in traffic and somebody cuts you off, and <laughs> that's, that's not good when that happens every single day. But if you're following this pattern and getting a natural elevation of cortisol in the morning, you're gonna feel energized throughout the whole day. So if there's one thing you're gonna take away from this is wake up in the morning, go for a 15 minute walk, and get that sun on your skin, get the sun through your eyes, it's gonna be so beneficial to you. 
Another hack is, speaking of going for walks, if you find yourself eating a large meal, let's say it's like a Thanksgiving meal that you just feasted and you're like, you're totally stuffed, your energy levels have just dimmed down, to help with your energy levels, to help with the blood sugar spike, if you go for a 15 minute walk after a large meal, it's gonna cut down that blood sugar spike. So if you find yourself eating a large, carb-filled meal, the best thing to do is go for a walk right after. This is especially important if you are somebody who is pre-diabetic or diabetic. A post-meal walk is a good thing to do for you guys. And let's talk about coffee, caffeine. Who's a coffee drinker right here? Raise your hand. Oh yeah, everybody. I love my coffee. Yeah, I love it. Uh, I'm gonna give you some phenomenal techniques and tips on drinking coffee. So it turns out the best time to have coffee is approximately 90 minutes after waking up. When you wake up in the morning, your body produces cortisol, like I mentioned, right? Cortisol is so powerful, and caffeine has no match for it. So when you have coffee, within 90 minutes of waking up, your cortisol is already so elevated that that caffeine, that coffee you drink, is pretty much rendered useless. So the most that will happen from that cup of coffee is you'll get some, jitter, some jittery feelings, but that caffeine is not gonna be used for energy, the cortisol is gonna take over. But what happens at the 90 minute mark is that your cortisol begins to drop down, which is natural, everybody it happens with everybody. So if you wait till 90 minutes after you wake up, then you have your coffee, that cortisol is gonna bind with the caffeine and it's gonna boost up your energy for the remainder of the day. So this is a great energy hack. If you follow that walk, that 15 minute walk, then have your coffee 90 minutes later, you're gonna have a significant increase in your energy levels throughout the day. Another thing with coffee is caffeine curfews, right? A lot of people have their coffee, especially a lot of, uh, is it the, is it the Cubans who do that? Have it after dinner? Yeah, Cubans have it after dinner, and it's a very popular thing in Miami specifically, but people tell me all the time, it's fine, I can have a cup of espresso or a shot of espresso and I can fall asleep fine. Ronald says that all the time, my buddy Ronald. Um, and it's true, you could fall asleep, but that sleep you're gonna get, it's gonna be very light, crappy sleep. It's not gonna be that restorative sleep. So it's very, it's a good idea to have a caffeine curfew of about 2 p.m. because caffeine has a half life of about eight hours. So if you have your coffee at 2 p.m., which is the latest time I recommend, it'll be out of your system by around 10 p.m. So have a caffeine curfew, it's a very good idea. And I'm not saying not to drink coffee, I love coffee. Um, I do recommend organic fair trade coffee. I know they have some good stuff here. Uh, and I buy the whole beans and I grind them myself. Sanders a coffee snob just like me, so he could relate to what I'm talking about. And uh, let's talk about other ways that we could increase our energy levels. How many of you want to have more energy throughout the day? Yeah, me too, right? So most people, yeah, thank you very much. Most people get tired, they get an energy slump around between 1 to 3 p.m., it's very common. What is it called at 3 p.m., they take a shot of the Cuban coffee? Isn't it like called something, something time? Yeah. Not a siesta. What is the Cuban coffee called? Colada. Yeah, colada time, they call that colada time, yeah. So, that, yeah. So, it's a lot of people get this energy slump and it's not because they had a, a bad lunch or a high, high carb, sugary lunch, although that could contribute to it, but we are, the way we were designed is our core body temperature actually drops around 1 p.m. And this, is, this happens with all of us. Our core body temperature drops around 1 p.m. and our melatonin gets an increase. So melatonin is your sleep hormone, antioxidant. You want it at night, but you don't want it during the day. This happens because one, between 1 to 3 p.m. is actually the best time to take a nap, by the way. So if you're gonna take a nap, a 25 minute nap between 1 and 3 p.m. is gonna power you throughout the rest of the day. But let's say you work in a corporate job or you work in an office, and you can't nap at your desk or you don't wanna get caught napping at your desk. <laughs> what can you do to, to prevent that energy slump? I got the perfect solution for you. Head outside and get 10 minutes of sun on your skin. Get 10 minutes of sun through your eyes. What happens? It's gonna put a halt to that core body temperature being dropped. It's gonna put a halt to your melatonin being, to your melatonin being produced and you're gonna have sustainable energy for the rest of the day. So if you find some, yourself getting tired around one, two or three p.m., head outside for 10 minutes, I guarantee it's gonna take care of that problem. Another thing you can do is to eat a lot more healthy fats. If you wanna have more energy, if you wanna have perfect health, if you wanna have brain health, it's all about the fats. You know, and the cool thing about fats is that you can find healthy fats if you're a vegan, vegetarian, ketogenic, 
there's healthy fats for all of you. And the reason being is that healthy fats, they help power your hormones. What I mean by that is that when you eat healthy fats, you're, you don't get a spike in insulin, you get a small spike, spike in insulin. When you have carbs and protein, you get a larger spike in insulin. Insulin is the fat storage hormone. Insulin causes energy roller coasters, but fat does not really do that. So fat's gonna give you sustainable energy. So 